Good morning. I hope everybody is doing well. It's morning here in Arizona. It's 9 a.m., but it's probably a different time wherever you might be. So 9 a.m. Mountain Time, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, as promised, it is time for us to kick off the uh, live IG live that I was planning to kind of just share with some fellow creative entrepreneurs. So I have a guest that's going to be popping on here in a short minute. He should be seeing this any second now. Um, but I just really want us to have this conversation. I think it's important um, as thought provoking conversations. And for me, as a creative entrepreneur, I feel like it's even more important. So, so let's see. Is he in there? Hey! Good morning, Good guys. morning. Good morning. How are Hello. you doing? Are you eating? No, 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 no. Not at all. I just... Uh, oh, that's face. important. <laughs> Try to get as fresh as I could before the... Uh, that's important. Line. That's important. <clears throat> Yes. Much, so I'm excited to have you as the first and only male voice as a part of the Black, excuse me, Black Business Month conversation that we're doing. Um, I really have been going back and forth in my mind about all of the different things that I wanted to discuss. And it's interesting because I feel like with all of the people that I've kind of made this roster with I feel like each one of you guys is going to bring something different because of the experiences that you guys have had not only in business but as a creative entrepreneur as a whole so just kind of give everybody a brief synopsis about who you are what you do where you're located where you're from well my name is Wes um, I'm a commercial photographer based out of Taylor Arizona and uh, my discipline is photography, obviously. And I'm from <clears throat> Los Angeles, California. And uh, I've been here for like 13 years. Before I was a, sh um, before I was a chef, before, um, excuse, me, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat is really dry. Before photography, I was a chef. I was in a culinary arts field really deep, but I wasn't really satisfied with the level of creativity that I was being able to express. So what I did, I segued to another form of art which was uh photography and i've been here now since. did you say where you're based i know you said you're from la but did you tell everybody where you're based oh no i'm based Chandler, in Chandler, arizona Chandler, arizona and i'm currently at my uh, i'm at my studio which is the lens lounge which is located in chandler near the private airport kind of close to the uh yes fashion mall and, uh, yes. Oh, and look, you are already getting comments. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. Uh -huh. Let's go. So Good morning. Good I morning. So um, Good morning, just to everyone. kind of recap, everybody, the conversation that I am having over the throughout the month of August is to highlight <clears throat> black businesses, but more specifically, black creative entrepreneurs like myself. Um, I feel like with us, things are a little bit differently, um, especially when you're a service-based creative entrepreneur. People feel like they can do more negotiating with you than maybe other service, you know, other businesses. You know, I feel like if you go into Walmart, if you go into the mall, if you go into the restaurant, you don't go back and forth with them about how much something is. So. Wes, kind of tell us what your true. experience with that has been. Well, um, I think that, and I'm going to go a little go psychological with it. I think that um, us as a community, we, we're always looking for the, uh, now, the say, easy way out. Define who you're referring to when you say be, us as a community. The black community. We always uh, are looking for the easy way out. And the reason why we're looking for the easy way out because we've been having it hard for the last 350 years. It just wasn't until recently we were able to kind of, you know, breach that glass ceiling and started um, being able to be treated like equals. And uh, so we still have that culture of that mentality 
that you know we should not have to pay full price for anything and i think it's a doing a disservice to us you know what i mean because uh not too long ago we we're talking about the black dollar and uh how mm -hmm. long it stays in the community and believe it or not once the black dollar reaches our one person's hand the next person it goes to is outside of the community right. or outside our race that is and um the ones the the people that have it the longest is the jewish and the chinese community so what i mean by that say there is a um a chinese excuse me a chinese uh janitor right and he, he gets paid from his chinese boss and he takes his money to a chinese market and the chinese market turns around they pay a uh, chinese landlord and a chinese landlord puts it into you know back into that supermarket so there's an ecosystem going on in a lot of other communities are races that uh we are not really privy to in a black community and um what i like to do i don't like to exclude any other races by any means necessary but i like to do my best to uh try to source out other black entrepreneurs when i put together photo shoots like the last one we did julia the whole set was uh melanated and it was an, uh, an awesome event. yeah very, yeah, very it's good. interesting you mentioned one thing too in reference to the black dollar. I feel like there was a lot of misinformation or maybe not even misinformation, a lack of information. I feel like especially when I was growing up, nobody in my household taught me how to save. Like we weren't talking about credit. We weren't talking about how to save. We weren't talking about any of those things. So when I see um Black entrepreneurs really taking the time to understand that I'm like cheering, like whether I vocalize it or not, I'm cheering because that's not everybody's experience. So I'm happy to see, you know, right. like the younger generation really taking the time to understand their credit and how to build their credit score and how to build generational wealth. I feel like all of that is super, super important. Whereas with me, somebody in my forties with, you know, two and a half, I say two and a half grown kids because the, the half one, she thinks she grown, <laughs> but like, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's hey, different. Katie. You know, I'm trying to teach them things that I felt like I didn't know, but teaching them what teaching them, what I didn't know is also encouraging them to go out and purchase. I see my home girl on here. Um, Sharon, I saw something that she posted um not too long, long ago about people renting and the power of owning um and a lot of us will get together and be like yeah we'll, let's get together and let's own a studio but or own a building but how often does that really happen yeah we always talk in theory i mean if, if you really think about it man um we are like very 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 skilled as a, as a culture finding out the problem whatever the problem may be but we're not very skilled to find out the the reluce, um excuse me the resolution to that 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 problem i i go to churches a lot you say you go to like a um, a black baptist church they can tell you all the things that are going absolutely wrong just ask <laughs> one reason <laughs> <Education. laughs> <Education. laughs> <Education. laughs> it up with on the live look <laughs> It's Sunday, let's keep it PG. love connection going on in this joint. <laughs> so as I, as I was saying, um, we we as a black community, you go to like a Baptist church and you will hear people say they will address every problem in the community, but rarely do we talk about the issues that, not the issues, but the resolutions, the, the, the answer, the antidote to the issues that we have. And I believe we're, we're, we're good at that, but I think it's time for us to start talking about how we're going to fix some of these problems in the black community. And I don't really like to say sensationalize the issues in the black community because I don't want people to come at us like, oh, they have issues, oh, they have problems, they want to help us just out of pity. I want us to be seen as a force at what we are. So I'm going to try my best to just talk about the, the the good that's going on you know the problems that we have solved the issues that we have conquered because to me that is way more important than the uh the the hill yeah. bone is way more yeah. important than the yeah. cast if you would you know what i mean it, you know it's you know we just had that that situation where you know supreme court is ruling for affirmative action to to be removed 
Boop. And I just found out this past week that um, I guess there's a nonprofit agency that um, what's her name? Keisha Knight Pullum. It's her and like two other people that are kind of at the helm of that. And basically they're getting, I don't know if they're getting sued or something is being taken from them, but they're no longer allowed to be able to say that they are servicing the black community because it's racist. <laughs> like what? <laughs> but the Supreme Court oh, has wait, gotten wait. involved in that. I, I need to, to get all my facts together, but I literally just read something about the Supreme Court come against, coming against them as a nonprofit who is trying to invest monies back into the uh, black community. And they're putting a stop to it because they're saying that you can't basically say that you're going to specifically um, do something for one race that's considered racist. Really? Well, um, <clears throat> let's uh, talk to the 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 quite. I'm not going to say any the quite community. Um, the definition of racism is having a infrastructure together that benefits one and um, retards the next or palsies the next. Um, black the black community don't own enough for us to be racist. I don't have a police station. I don't have a government out there that wrote laws to make it to where white people can't do anything. There wasn't laws written on the book like after slavery called loitering that took us away from um, being free and put us back into black servitude <clears throat> or white servitude, if you would. So racism is something we can't do. Black people can be bigots. We can be ignorant. But as far as us um, being racist, it, it's not it's not possible. We don't own enough to be racist. And I'm not trying to talk about us badly, but there's no way that I can be called racist or anybody in the black community be called racist because racism is not just a word. It's not just a feeling that it you know project on somebody. It's actually stopping their lives for generations to come. So for them to say that, I think they're taking away from the power of the, the word racism that they that they created and and and, and make it to where it's benefiting. Yeah them now so that's you know that's and awful speaking of benefiting fair. like as it relates to us as entrepreneurs so i've had something going on recently that i haven't really spoken a whole lot about and um i had to present a pitch and i am a planner anybody that knows me like really knows me knows that i'm going to have some type of a plan especially if it's something that i am yeah. Fully invested in, you know, so I, you know, I have all of these books behind me. They're not here just for show. Like I have a journal. I notate like I always am building on different things and ideas. So I had a pitch recently and in the pitch, I really took my time to do my research so that I knew what I was talking about from A to Z. And I delivered the pitch. The pitch went well. And let me say that the pitch was to um, a group of individuals that weren't, you know, it was a di diverse group as far as age. It was all women, but I was the only minority. And um, I feel like it went well, but we circled back and I started getting questions that made me feel like the individuals that weren't involved in it didn't really take the time to speak to their counterparts before they started asking me questions. Now, I feel like if anybody else that wasn't me came to a meeting unprepared, asking questions, they would have checked them like, why didn't you read the, the pitch deck before you came to this? Why are you asking her these questions? She already presented this. When I tell you it was dead silence, nobody spoke up for me at all like at all so as it, when it relates to us as creative entrepreneurs we have to do our due diligence 10 times over 10 times over yes. talk to yes, me about an yes, experience yes. that you might have had both positive and negative with that oh man man i got i got plenty of those all right, when I first started, all right, I got to go back a long way, like 13 years ago. No, 11 years ago when I first started doing photography. 
what I used to do was I used to try my best to put on the King's English, right? And talk a certain way. And, you know, I did everything I could to look as non-threatening as I possibly could. And um, no matter what I did, I could not um, earn, I, I, for lack of better words, the white dollar, the white, the high white dollar. And I was really frustrated for years and years and years. So what I did instead of um, trying to, I guess, uh, uh, shuck and jive my way in, I just started to let my skill speak for itself. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you guys remember that movie called um, Five Heartbeats, but there's a scene in that movie that really, really humbles me. That's a classic. Um, their, their record exactly. That's a classic. Huh? Come on. It's, it is. It's a great movie. So there's a scene in there where the record executives brings back the album cover, and he's like, hey, man, this is the album cover. And on the album cover was white people having a picnic. And they were like, that's not us. He said, we got to cross over. They'll never ever cross over to us. Why we got to cross over to them? And so instead of doing that directly, I just let my skill, which was something that, you know, the, the white people kind of respond to a lot more. I let my skill start to speak for me. And ever since then, I stopped doing that because psychologically I was taken away from myself. You know, I was making myself be somebody that I didn't want to do. And I, the last thing anybody in the black community ever want to do is be a crossover. So I, I stopped that. So that's one thing. The positive part about it is that it's more of a, like a lesson for myself. I just learned to be myself and the people that to be around me and wanted to uh, work with me they came you know and uh, um it's almost like the herd mentality now my clientele base is um all across the board and so i don't want to call it for lack of better words i'm gonna just say that i took a long route i took a route that was kind of presented to me psychologically my whole entire life that i could not be who i was but I started to learn that being who I was was my biggest asset. So that was a positive side for me. The positive side was just trusting in the process and trusting that my skill set would outshine what I felt about me. Because nine times out of ten, when we do have these issues with other races, thinking that they're not going to accept us because of who we are, or whatever the case may be, it's only a small amount of people in the races that do that. The other ones are just as, as open and... Um, non-aggressive as we are so that's that, that's my um that's my experience. i feel like my experience in arizona now, has been different when I, so. really my experience back east was way different i'm speaking about like things that happen out here now the west coast is a little bit more lenient when it comes to stuff like that but then again julie you're global you know i'm still a local small company you know <laughs> and you remember we're <laughs> so your experiences are like uh, a lot bigger than mine so and, and you know what why we own the subject okay because you know how i feel about mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do not ever 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 call me local ever, mm -hmm. ever. i'm based here no, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the individuals that are going to watch this later on that have tried to allow that to come out of their mouth. Oh, oh, wait, wait. You talking about the ones that didn't know that you're flying to London? You talking about them? <laughs> you're going to cross the pond? Oh, they need to know. I just, I feel like people will try their best to minimize you. Oh, my God. Do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go She's like, Sorry, she just um, what's going on? Who are you talking to? Um, but I feel like people will try their best right. to attempt attempt to minimize you based on their own insecurities. And unfortunately, I feel right. like sometimes we get more of that within our community. Oh, yeah. Of course, I mean, of course. it's sad. I think um, it, it is because people like they've kind of based their uh their belief system and their ability to or not to off of their right. own 
skill set. And uh, it's sad because I got more naysay and, and less support from people that I know personally that grew up with me versus the people that see me, uh, that just met me yeah. as a, a professional. So that's just, yeah. it comes with the territory. It really does. And I'm not even, I'm not, at this point in my life, I don't even get mad at people anymore for their, their belief system because being angry at them kind of stops my progress. Thinking about them and concentrating on them stops my progress. So I just, you know, I stay in my own lane and just put my head I down. I stay in my it. lane, but I switch lanes when I put the blinker on. That's it. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, when, you, when you're in the car driving, when, you, when it's time for you to switch, don't you put your blinker on? Or do you just cut people off and try to get in front of them? I am courteous. It depends on how I feel. I, I'm courteous. I give you a little blinker action to let you know it's coming before I just move over. You know, just saying. That's just me, though. I hear a tone before to be reckoned with. <laughs> that's so, just me, though. So what projects are are you in the process of working on that you can share? Well, there's one I've been kind of, uh, I have an organic uh, relationship with a couple of alcohol brands. Uh, one is called Screwball Whiskey, which is a peanut butter infused whiskey based out of San Diego, California. We do things every once in a while. You know, they send me product to kind of test and talk about. And also the biggest thing that I'm trying to get done and kind of finalized now is a thing with uh, Kevin Hart's brand. He has a alcohol called Grand Carmino, and um, we're going to be doing a lifestyle shoot with that. Um, and the biggest thing right now is um, with the way Arizona is, we have a feast and famine type of um, season. Around this time, there's not a lot going on. So what I do is I always encourage all the other creators around me to kind of let's use this time for like self-marketing, self-reflecting, getting ourselves ready for the busy season. Because once September, like, you know, the first two weeks of September end, it's go time after that. Your book is going to start filling up, at least if you're worth your grain. So that's what I do right now. I'm just gearing up for the busy season and making sure that all my ducks are in a row and everything's going to work out because uh, I keep my head mm -hmm. down and do my due diligence. Now, with those particular projects, are they allowing you to crew or are they suggesting people that they want you to work with? No. no they're, they're, it's, it's all in my hands because basically what it is is um, – with those two that I just spoke to about, those two alcohol brands, what I basically do is uh, I'm a create con a content creator, excuse me, and a brand ambassador for both brands. So they just allow me to do what I do. And sometimes they pick up the, uh, the stuff and put it on their websites or their Instagram, and sometimes they don't. But the trade-off is that I get exposure on a you know, global level, and I get as much free alcohol as I can. But they, I'm not going to say it. I don't drink, guys. I don't drink like that, but I do have a, a very large collection in, of alcohol. In his studio, the Lens Lounge. Like just that. saying, we're going to plug that really quick. The Lens Lounge <laughs> located in Chandler, Arizona. So with you crewing on your own, what is it that you look for when you are building your team? Man, all right, behind the lens, I look for discipline i look for somebody that is a front runner in their their craft i look for people that know what they're doing because even though we're out here doing it for like somewhat fun i want it to also be like a professional setting because i'm not here to play anymore like that was 10 15 years ago when i was playing so everything i do is um i try to have it at the like the top performing level but as far as people in front of the camera they have to have a sellability. I want somebody that when you look at them, you know, your mind goes to like a thought provoking thing. Like they don't have to necessarily be beautiful, but they have to have something that is trending at the, at the time. And um, same as I said, the people behind the scenes, someone that is uh, professional, someone that can be relied upon. I don't want anybody to, 
get to the set and just because they're beautiful they think that's all they need because i'm, I'm gonna tell you at this level if beauty is not enough you know i know a lot of people out there that are drop, drop that gorgeous can't can't do anything so you got to have i guess in the black community it's called a swagger you got to have a swagger about yourself so those are things i'm looking for professionalism people that are going to be on time people that you know if they're in front of the camera to be sellable and um so now it, really. let's ask this let, let me ask you this question and let's go ahead and keep it a buck since we're talking as black business owners mm -hmm. are you specifically looking for black business owners when you're building your crew or are you so solely basing it on everything else that you just said all right i'm gonna dun, take dun, dun, dun. Right i'm <laughs> kind of popping up right now all right listen remember that book that we call the bible remember that book it's a really good book right it, it, mm -hmm. it helped presidents out and you know it helped build nations and all that stuff the people that read the Bible and started to kind of perpetuate their lifestyle, they took that Bible and made it their own. You know what I'm saying? They took the, the dude in their name, Jesus Christ. They made him a white guy. They made all the disciples white. They even gave the disciples white names. And I'm not being racist. I'm not trying to be ignorant when I say this. But when I go out and I look for things, I do the same thing. I take my vision no matter what it is, and I paint it in my own image. You know what I'm saying? I paint it like all the people might be black, all the people might be, you know, melanated in some way. So I take the same type of mentality that everybody else does. It doesn't make me ignorant. It doesn't make me a big and a dim, so it doesn't make me racist. I don't have the ability to be that. But it makes me to where I work with like-minded people that I believe are my professional equal. So I don't get mad when white people do it. I don't get mad when Hispanic people do it. I don't get mad when Asian people do it. So I don't think anyone should get mad when we do it. If we have exclusivity to our race, then we, I'm still American. I still believe that I'm a patriotic person. I just prefer to work with people that I know their rhythms. I know their soul. I know their vibe, per se. Now, it doesn't mean I don't, I don't work with other people, because I do. I work with other races constantly but when i do my passion projects i want everything to be of a certain color because what i'm supposed to do is the same thing every other race is supposed to do perpetuate your bottom mm -hmm. agenda you know what i mean okay so that's how i, feel. I appreciate you sharing that um uh, i think that it's important that people understand that too from a creative aspect you know i feel like for me specifically especially when i'm conceptualizing you know every concept is different and sometimes i will be very specific in saying i want an asian woman i want a hispanic woman i you know i'll i'll say that but then i'll also say why and i feel like it's i was walking through let me take it a step further because i was walking through the grocery store yesterday and i had my daughter with me and i was looking at the ads the pictorial ads that were in the store Target actually, Target does this really well. They be putting their pictures up all over the wall. And I was like, wow, this is a really diverse group of people that they have up on these walls. I mean, I saw small, big, light skin, dark skin, freckles, textured hair, straight hair. I mean, for me, that's what I like to see. I want to see a little bit of everybody because I feel like that's what my book reflects. But at the same time, when I'm put in a in, in some type of little box, I do have an issue with it. Like I do totally, totally have an issue with it. It's not so much that I'm trying to cater to everybody, but I feel like as a professional, especially with what I do, if I don't teach people, they're not going going to understand how to work with everybody and i think that that's a part that's missing as well i'm all for working with my folks with black folks all for it but guess what y'all get on my nerve y'all get on my nerve and then get old julia come out and i'll be trying to leave her at the grip i don't be wanting to, to to put her on 10 when i'm working you know what i'm saying and not saying that she don't come out when i'm in other right, settings right. She absolutely does come out when I'm in other settings. Wes has, <laughs> Wes yeah, has been very privy to a lot of those instances. I just think that it, you know, 
like you you mentioned like comfortability and being able to adapt i feel like all of that plays into it as well yeah yeah it definitely does there's been times that i've seen you know i've seen many sides of julia this when we went to anaheim you're like hey did you read the syllabus did you i'm like <laughs> what <laughs> there's this so yeah julia definitely will uh keep you i'll get in that dairy she, air she'll definitely keep you guys in line yeah she'll, <laughs> My bad. My bad. <laughs> my bad. So, anywho, I just had to close the door because I think someone used to oh, vacuum good. in a studio. But um, I think that uh, uh, working with other races is it's just American. And believe it or not, people think because I'm leaning more left, or people that lean left are not patriotic and they don't love the country that they're in and that's not the case at all i love every part of america and i just know that what works well with me and that's what i yeah. kind of do so kind of I, I i work with what's around me at i guess any given time when i'm working with uh my white clients i give them the kind of like the statistics of or the de demographic statistics of america i'll have you know, 60% white or 45% white now that, you know, that is going down now, you know, maybe a little Asian there, a little white, uh, not white, but um, Hispanic and then the 11% black. So I kind of mix it up to kind of fit mm -hmm. the need of my client. But when I'm doing it for myself, it's, if it's my work and it's not commercial, I'm going to do what I see in my community. You know what I mean? So I see majority black people on a daily basis because I am black in my family now. It's so happy to be black so i'm going to do what i want to or what i see on a daily basis and i don't think it's a controversial thing at all i think the only thing i think that is is weird about it because if um if a white person was to say this they will be considered like racist like what the hell do you mean you doing that but they do it all the time they just can't speak about it. that's one thing that i love about being black we have the luxury of saying exactly what's on our mind and people are going to have to accept that because of the history we have in this country i know that's off the subject and i can go on tangents for days we got, so if you want to switch the subject hold like, on let me let me um i love glamin said do you experience people not taking you serious as an artist i.e your prices keeping you in a box when they think you can only work with black women i'm gonna let you answer the first half of that question wes Yes, um, all, all the time, all the time. I have people think just because of maybe the car I drive, the skin color, the tattoos on my body, because I'm like riddled with tattoos. They probably think that, oh, well, he's he's local. He's uh, a small time, so I'm going to be able to negotiate his prices. And and I, I say this, um, it's quoted by a great black philosopher known as Jay-Z. I set my price and I live my life. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want, I'm going from the lip. Go right ahead. Give me 30 seconds. Um, subliminally, what people do, like there's there's target demographics. There's the millionaires that will spend $40 on a hamburger. And then the people that are below them are like, why would they spend that much on a hamburger? But you got to realize that's not even 1% of their income. So a person that is making only $400 a week that that's one percent of their 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 earnings for that week so they're going to take your whatever price it is they're going to try to have with you so the higher up you go the the higher up the luxury brand kind of philosophy you go the less bs you have the less you have to have people say oh your prices are too high oh you're this you're that because they are only gauging off the fact that this is more convenience for them and not something that they got to truly invest in. If that yeah, makes that sense. makes Does sense. Does that make sense? Um, I don't know. If, I, okay, all right. So that's how I, I love plan things. Stay away I, I want to ask her if she feels ahead, like the first half of that question is was answered. Keep going. Okay, so um, when you you everyone has to start somewhere but my mentality is stay away from the dollar tree the walmart type of people not to say that they are bad clients but those are the ones that are investing so much into your craft 
that they will find a little thing to start complaining about that so they can kind of take away for some of the pay that they got, they have to give you. So if you try to dodge the people that are lower on the rung, the more you would have freedom. The less the pay, the more stress you're going to have. And to the second portion of your question, I love Glamin, um, I feel like not even it's not even a feeling. Wes and I have had this conversation before. It's it is what it is. I am not the first people person that people think of here locally when they think of a black hair and makeup artist. I'm not. Like I'm not and I am absolutely okay with that. Um and I feel like um a lot out of that is because my portfolio is so diverse. I had another black um, beauty beauty professional tell me, you don't work on black people. And I looked at her and I was like, did she just say that? Like, I was like, what makes you say that? And she was like, that's not your clientele. And I'm like, okay, but why do you think that's not my clientele? And she's like, because you work on everybody. So I I look at her and I'm like, that means that I, I actually do work on black people. I work on everybody. I said, the difference in between me and you is that my portfolio showcases that I work on everybody, whereas your portfolio is only bringing in one demographic, which is the black woman with locks. Like, th that's fine if that's only where you want to be, but that's not only where I want to be. So no, you don't get to put me in that little we box should. and say, I can only work with this person because I'm so thankful that I have a diverse portfolio. It allows me to educate people that are not black. And when, again, West has been there to right. see it. Right. When I'm teaching at these events, my class is not predominantly African-American. It is mixed. It, no, it is, it's, it's it is mostly, it's mostly white. white, but it is a it's a good mix, especially based on the dip, the um, state that I'm in. It's always different. It's always, 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 always different. And for me, that's that, that's how it has the to be. The further west you go, yeah, the further west you go, the uh, more you're going to get like uh, white predominant like crowds. When you start going east, the Midwest, that's when you get, uh, you know, a very good, a very healthy mix of people. We have someone that just asked a question too. They said, how do we generate? Ooh, ooh, I'm a journaler. I love a good journal. I just got this one from Target. Like I really needed another journal. But look at how beautiful it is. Even with all of the just talks about I'm diversity. Saying, I'm not just talking about it. I'm being about it, okay? But yeah, I I keep a journal. Um, I keep a and every journal has a purpose. So that's one thing that I do. I also have um, I don't know where they are. I thought I had it. I have face charts. So I'll sketch. Um, sometimes I will watch creative television shows. Like I just was watching a bacon show the other day i told you this Wes. i was watching a bacon show the other yeah. day and i got such a dope idea that i have to get out of my system to see if it actually works from watching a baking show you know so for me i find that i find creative ideas in other creative things you know and that is right. that is what works for me You know, for me, I get my ideas from, well, you have to kind of, when you're creative, you train your mind to kind of be more of a magnet and a sponge than anything else. So I can be sitting here even at my desk and I can see something that is uh, kind of uh, interesting and I want to take that and, you know, make it a piece of the puzzle for an idea that I have. Just recently, we did a photo shoot for an um, un undisclosed uh, magazine and uh i remember when i was a kid i used to put stockings over my head and that like glossy film glow that it gave i use that you know i use something from way back when i was a kid because i seen a show where a burglar put like he was a bank robber he put this uh, stocking over his head and 
it it was a, a cool look you know so i did that and so basically in a nutshell i get my ideas from just absorbing information absorbing inspiration all throughout the day it's not one source yeah. that i get my i ideas totally from. agree we have a comment from sharon she says majority of her students are non-black and when they walk in her school they already know that they're learning all tones because she does all tones uh sharon is based in florida she has right. um she is duly licensed as well um and she has an aesthetics school can we just shout out that she is a black educator in florida duly licensed that has a school like an actual brick and mortar and her students are diverse one time for the one time okay let's just let's just give it up what are you looking at what are we looking at oh my buddy Dan Nickerson, which is a um, a recording artist, he's just joined on there. So I just gave him a little. Oh crap! My bad. I gave him a shout out. Sorry. My camera's on. It's like my, so shout out to Sharon shout out and to shout out to who? Dan. Shout out to Dan. Okay. Dan. 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 Yeah, we got we got to be willing to big up our folks, whoever they are. We got. To. Wes, you got a question. All right, says I agree with you. It might is be that a question or a statement. statement. Wes, I completely agree. The idea of creating a website approaching regarding the app. I love what you're doing with it. Of course, of course. I um I love when people say they want ideas from me or they want me to for, you know to ask me for help. I am so willing to do that because I remember when I first became a photographer, I reached out so much and no one had any information, nor did they have any use or trying to help out another you know creative so when people come to me i'm all the way in i'm all you can use my facilities i mean everything that i have at my disposal you guys have at, at your disposal so yeah let me know if you want any, any information like I'll you know what even put my i disagree with you this because i used to be like that people have used me so much that when somebody says can I pick your brain? It's almost like I feel the brain juice oozing out of my ear. Because they forget well, you, that I, 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 I'm pouring into you, I'm helping you, but then you get out there and you act like you did it all by yourself. It's not like, it's not, and please don't get it twisted. I'm not looking for public acknowledgement, but don't make it seem like you just had a revelation from the lord just dropped in your spirit because you knew nothing until you came and sat in my chair and i gave you all of the know-how so i stopped doing that when people say that they want to put, pick my brain they have to book a consult with me because i just i can't i can't do that to myself because i was pouring so much into other people that i was leaving myself depleted so i stopped doing that oh yeah i mean my resource for help is it's finite it, it definitely is but there are people out there that i can see like young you know scrubby little photographers and stuff like that no disrespect because i was a scrubby little <laughs> we were all scrubs at one point. and um <laughs> right exactly exactly so those i would help out but if somebody that's on my level they come to me well how did you do that and most of the time i'm like oh man you know it was crazy i just hit them with something that gives no information at all because I know the difference between somebody that wants help and somebody that's looking to right. be my competition. You know what I'm saying? We are in a very yeah. competitive market being creatives. I mean, like 90% of the fucking planet, excuse me for cursing, it seems like they want to be a creative now on some shape, yeah. form, or a level. So I know the difference. I can kind of like uh, weed through somebody that's trying to like basically steal like an idea or but still my hard on work versus somebody that's inspired by me. So um, no disrespect, but I know the difference between a fan and competition. The fan, I'm going to help out. The competition, you guys, hey, look, that, meet me at the top, sucker. So I'm and, on my way too. And let's kind of close this out. I can't believe we've been on here 40 minutes already. Um, <laughs> uh, said, Dan, you're right. <laughs> Has this been helpful for anybody? Just having the conversation in general. So in closing, you already... Yeah. If this has been you helpful, put a emoji. let us know what projects you were in the process of kind of working on. So, in closing, what um, I guess inspirational 
information can you share with other creative entrepreneurs that might be just kind of getting in their own way? Well, um, I can only talk from my own experience. And what I would say is, uh, if you, if you go to sleep and you wake up and throughout the day, you're thinking about whatever, whatever project or whatever, uh, dream job you are, dream career, whatever you have, that's your calling. Do that. And and sometimes you're going to have to be selfish with everything else around you and concentrate on that first. I think one of the biggest things that kind of mess us up as people here, not as black people or not as any other race, is that we will take what we want right now and concentrate on that versus what we want in the future. We will kind of uh, eat our seeds, metaphorically speaking, and forget about our our future, our, our goals and dreams and aspirations. And that's something that happens all the damn time you're going to have to be selfish to remember that kid in you that wanted to be the ballerina that wanted to be the fire truck person that wanted to be the astronaut and keep that part of you you don't have to grow up in every way physically mentally yeah but your dreams keep them as naive as and and, and kid like as possible because that's the way that we get there to that that upper echelon is never ever stop dreaming about what you want in life Someone drop the mic one time for the one time. Okay, okay. Well, I appreciate you for being on here with me and kicking this off. I, again, West is the only male that is participating in, and that was not on purpose. I promise, I promise, I promise it wasn't on purpose, but he was one of the first people that, you know, I thought about. So why not just have you be the first one I out the gate? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Thank you so much. I'm humbled. Um, just to like, kind of give you your flowers where flowers are due, Julia, you have helped me grow in so many different ways. Um, I really appreciate all the all the the things that we have done together, like put me on projects that they didn't even really want a photographer and you kind of like put my name in, in rooms that I wasn't even mentioned that before. That means a lot to me. Thank you so much. And even putting up with my with the fact that I just come to photo shoots ready to shoot, not knowing nothing about the project. So I really appreciate that. And I do that a lot. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, I love you. You know, you are you are basically family to me. You are unk over here to 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 Tootie. Because right. the other ones they, yeah. they too grown to that's, listen that's to that's anybody, it. right? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm that's dealing with one that's this having some hangover issues this morning. So, you know, I gotta I gotta hey. How is he? How, how's he doing? He ain't keeping nothing down, poor baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Hey. I, I mean, I I remember the there, things, though. I remember the things, but you paying for that right now, bro. You paying for that? <laughs> yeah. There's a trade off yeah. like, for that. Yeah. Like, you got to trade something. It, it's like that type of. Uh, Yes. Well, we will continue this conversation. I will post the next uh, date, time, and individual or creative that is going to be on here with me. I have them lined up, but we're going to be doing this throughout the month of August. If you aren't already, make sure that you follow West Eel underscore photo. Make sure that you follow West Eel underscore vids and the Lynn's lamp okay all of those are under oh. his business oh, umbrella also, and and there's also food i mean you don't have the follow because i don't even really pay attention to it too much but oh, when i do food right. photography i got a separate page as well called food for photo. yeah so it's food underscore for photo or something like that i can't look You'll at that it. page too long no, because no it mind, makes really, me hungry yeah oh, it's, thank it's, you thank you i try my best and most of the time it's cooked by me too I cook most of that stuff, so you know. What you say? That uh, you cook that, lost, and I got a whole kitchen over you. here. Stop playing with me. <laughs> let's, let's use your kitchen for one of these things. When I do that, I haven't um, done anything in a while, but I am going to try to make uh, peanut butter infused whiskey. So 
I want oh, that's hear. Got, oh, we need to have the boys here. That'll be that'll really be comic relief. Yeah. No, I think I said that, that wrong. I'm trying to make whiskey, no peanut butter with whiskey. I like peanut butter, so it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. See, look, we just came right. up with another creative so idea that quick. That quick. That quick. All right. Well, I I appreciate you. Enjoy your Sunday. Thank you all for tuning in, and I will have more for y'all very soon. Make sure you are supporting a Black business this month. All right. Be good.